Hi and welcome back to the channel. I'm Ash and what you're about to watch is another installment of our interview short summary series. So if you haven't seen them already, subscribe and hit notifications to get the rest and you can have a look at the playlist where you can see all the previous modules. So today's module is about questions all relating to you that you'll get at your medicine interviews. So without further delay, let's just dive straight in. So these questions all about you will be looking at your strengths, your weaknesses, your life experience and whether you've got the ability to have reflected on them and and use them as a learning experience. They're going to be testing things like your time management, your ability to cope under pressure, and whether you're tough enough to stick out a long medical degree. So as I say, this is all going to be about reflection. Can you look back on your experiences, analyze, evaluate them, learn from them, and grow so that you can take forward the experiences to improve as a person next time? So these questions that are all about you are gonna come under three broad categories. The first is your strengths and weaknesses. The second is your ability to identify when you're stressed and how you deal with it. And then finally, how you can demonstrate resilience and your ability to overcome failure. So let's look at each of these in turn now. So first let's look at strengths. And that will typically come in the question form of what is your biggest strength? Or something along the lines of if someone else that you know was to describe you, what words would they use? So the way to answer these questions about strength is to say something genuine, don't be too humble, Pick something that highlights a really outstanding achievement or trait of yours. Try not to say the same trait in a different way or using similar words. Pick three completely separate ones. And always try and relate them back in a way to the skills that a doctor must have and how these traits relate to those. I really advocate the method of claim and corroborate. So stake your claim and then give an example that backs up what you just said. And one great thing to do is to, to corroborate your point, use uh, some examples from work experience or achievements, which is a subtle way again of showing off some of your uh, great traits or achievements or things that you've done without actually being asked about them directly. And one final thing, tactically, if somebody asks you to name more than one trait, let's say they ask for three of your biggest strengths, make sure that you start by saying all three of them, then go each of them in, into each of them individually by doing the claim and corroborate for each one. So similar questions that you'll get to this is, what is your one best quality, which is exactly the same as a book, but you just do one. Another one is maybe, do people generally like you? And of course the answer is yes, and then you give a few reasons why. Things like, what makes you think you'll be a good doctor? Now you should name all your positive attributes and then link them back to the skills required to make a good doctor. Or they may ask you something like, what makes you suitable for a career in medicine? Which is essentially the same question as asking whether you'd make a good doctor. Okay, now let's look at questions relating to weaknesses. Well, these questions are just testing your ability to reflect and the amount of self-awareness that you have about yourself. So when answering negative questions, such as what's your biggest weakness, make sure that you say something genuine, avoid cliches, but at the same time, don't say something that's so severe that it's unredeemable and makes you unsuitable to study medicine. Remember, it's your ability to show insight and be able to reflect. So some tactics for this are tell the story of how you came to discover this weakness and then always finish it off with what you're doing or how you're working to overcome that particular weakness. As I say, the marks in these questions lie in your ability to identify the weakness and then be able to work towards it to overcome it. So similar questions might be, what's the worst thing about you? Or what's the one thing that you would change about yourself? Which are essentially the same and should be tackled as the, the one that I've just described. Other things they might ask you is, what's the worst thing about a career in medicine? Or what are you least looking forward to at medical school? And again, that's just demonstrating your ability to uh, have insight and realize some of the not so grave aspects of medical school. And then just what you've planned or how you plan to overcome them and combat them when you actually start medical school yourself. And as I say, as long as you demonstrate the ability to show insight and reflect upon these, it's actually okay to use genuinely negative answers. Okay, so moving on to stress identification and management. You must be well aware by now that uh, medical school has lots of stresses. They come in many forms. They're psychological, emotional, time pressure for deadlines, studying for exams, upholding a placement schedule while you're doing all of this, and actually trying to balance somewhat of a normal life with commitments that you have for a normal person. So how do we cope? Well, that's what they're going to ask you. They're going to want to know that you've thought about this, how you're going to juggle all of these things. So I would recommend the following three-step approach to answering questions about time management and stress identification. So when you get asked questions about stress, you need to do the following three things. Firstly, show that you have the ability to identify in yourself when you get stressed. 
Second, that you have something that you do that you know can help release it. And then finally, again, reflect, reflect, reflect. That's what I always say. And reflect back on why the ability to manage stress is important for longevity and success in medical school and your medical career. They may even ask you to describe a time when you had to manage a stressful situation. And remember the scare tactic that I use in other videos. You can check that out and use that formula to demonstrate and talk through how you manage the stressful situ situation in your own life. And if you're struggling for some answers on how to manage stress, here are a few suggestions that you can use when you answer these questions yourself. So firstly, it's important to gain some perspective, then write a list of the problems that's bothering you. Prioritize them, that's what you do every day as a junior doctor, you have a list of things and you have to work through the most important. Then you take action on the most important, you reassess your list at regular intervals because the priorities might change. And then finally, it's the ability to get support where needed. Despite you working the hardest in the world, you're just one person and you do have a finite capacity and that's okay to understand that and know your limits and know when it's time to ask for help from others. So have at the forefront of your mind what you do as a long-term stress release and what you do to prevent yourself from boiling over. And the final section that you'll get asked about is resilience and the ability to overcome failure. Now, the GMC even has their own definition for resilience, which is the capacity to recover quickly from difficulties. And I can tell you for sure that the chances of you getting through medical unscathed without any failures or any difficulties to overcome are absolutely zero. Every single person I know either fails an exam at some point or has some sort of problem in their medical school career. So that is just a given and it's your ability to recognize that failures will occur and the fact that you have the resilience to overcome them that is important to demonstrate at your medical school interviews. And again, you guessed it, the skill that they want to see is your insight and reflection. So if we get questions relating to resilience or overcoming failures, again, I want you to use the scare tactic. And here, the majority of your answer will be on the action and what went wrong that led to the failure. Again, on your reflection as to what lessons you've gained and how you can apply them in the future to make sure that you are stronger or less likely to have that failure occur again in the future. And finally, the important thing is to show them that you have the resilience. So despite that setback, you have the grit and determination to keep going, to pick yourself up, dust yourself off and go again. And that will be really important to get across at your medical school interviews. So if you would like to see some demonstrations of some people answering questions about questions about you and about your strengths and weaknesses, you can head over to my website where I've linked to below where you can see the online course that I've made for medical school interviews and that gives you in the region of about nine hours of video lessons and then another four hours of live mock interviews with students and how they've answered the questions and then me critiquing their answers and then I go through another three hours of the hot topics and typical questions that come up and I talk through model answers and the points that you need to get across. Again I'm going to be releasing these modules every couple of days so make sure you subscribe and hit notifications so that you don't miss them and thank you for watching and I will see you in the very next module.